Today we are going to look into one of the biggest and oldest mansions ever built in Texas. The craftsmanship in this home is so outstanding that you will not want to miss a single second of this video. Make sure to stick around to see how this mansion still stands today when a hurricane so deadly came through, leaving this one of the deadliest natural events in the 20th century. But before we get started, if you are a fan of the abandoned and historical locations, then you are in the right place. I post videos like this every Tuesday. Make sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss an episode. I will pin the best comment below just like this one. Okay, let's get started in today's history. Between the years of 1886 to 1893, Walter Gresham had his home built in Texas in the town of Galveston. This home would later be known as the Bishop Palace. Wait, 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 wait. Let's back up a bit and let's explain who Walter Gresham is. Walter Gresham was born in Woodlawn, Virginia in the year 1841. He would later go on to college to study law and at the age of 20 he left school and then enlisted to fight in the Civil War as a private in the 9th and the 24th Virginia Cavalry. He would spend the duration of the Civil War alternating between various Confederate units and semesters studying the law at the University of Virginia where later in 1863 he would receive his degree. After graduating law school, he returned to the Confederate Army for the third time, where he would stay until the war was over, which the American Civil War lasted between 1861 to 1865. That's if you didn't know. Now, the following year, he moved to Galveston, Texas and opened his own law practice. In 1868, he married a woman named Josephine, and he ended up fathering nine children. Then, in 1872, Walter's hard work finally paid off when he became the district attorney of Galveston. He would later go on to do many other things to better serve Galveston, and one of those was serving as a member of the Texas House of Representatives between the years of 1893 and 1895. Okay, now back to where we started off. So in 1886, Walter started the construction of his new home that would finish some time in 1893. This luxurious, handcrafted, Chateau Escue style home was designed by a Galveston architect, Nicholas J. Clayton, who was well known for his Victorian-like styles. Nicholas designed many well-known structures that still stand today. This mansion is built with a basement that has a double door entryway that's right under the main stairway in front of the home. The mansion is built with three stories, not including the basement. But do you care to guess how many rooms this mansion has or what this mansion is valued today? Stay tuned to find out the shocking truth. Now, this is where the story takes a violent turn. In the beginning of September 1900, it was just another normal month in Galveston. People working, kids playing, people going on with their day-to-day -day things. Nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary, except there was one thing. The Gulf Coast seemed to have warmer water than normal. As reports show, it was claimed to be as warm as bath water which this warm water can be a breeding ground for hurricanes if the weather is just right. While that was being discovered in Galveston, the southwestern coast of Cuba was hit with a very strong tropical storm causing very heavy rainfall for two days. Then the storm moved just off the shores of the Florida Straits. This now growing storm was thought to turn north and head towards the Atlantic, but instead the storm turned west and headed into the Gulf of Mexico. The storm moving over the warm water of the Gulf of Mexico, damaging cities as it passed Mississippi and Louisiana, the telegraph lines were down due to the impact of the storm moving. The telegraph lines, if you didn't know, are wire lines that would help states and cities relay messages back and forth to help communicate. So with the telegraph lines being down in Louisiana, Galveston would not get notified of the growing storm that was heading their way. Oh yeah, and on top of that, to make things even worse, the National Weather Bureau in Washington, for political reasons, refused to believe that the reports that they did receive earlier was about going the storm's to be intense. Path, 
This move would leave Galveston's population vulnerable and completely unprepared for what was about to happen. Then, on September 8th through the 9th, the hurricane hit so hard, causing the city to almost be washed away as 15 feet of water flooded in while being pushed by 145 miles an hour winds. This was a complete devastation and loss for the city of Galveston. The storm destroyed about every building. Walter Grisham's mansion and just a few other buildings were the only buildings that remained standing. The 1900 Galveston hurricane was estimated to have killed 6 to 12,000 people at the time, causing $30 million in property damage and also destroyed the city's future and what could potentially have been the greatest port of the Gulf Coast. The storm would also be known as the killer. 20 years after the storm, Walter died in 1920. Then in 1923, just three years later, Walter's daughter sold the mansion to the Diocese of Galveston for $45,500. Bishop Christopher Edward Byron lived there for many years. The bishop made some minor changes to the mansion, such as expanding the kitchen on the first floor. One of the Walter's daughter's rooms were turned into a chapel on the second floor, where there sat an altar and six prayer kneelers. Also, the windows in that room were replaced with beautiful handcrafted stained glass that in some of them would depict the disciples of the Bible and even had the ceiling painted as well. After the diocese moved its office to Houston in 1963, the mansion became open to the public, giving tours and using the money to help fund a medical school that was being used in the basement. The mansion, which is famously known as the Bishop Palace, sits right across the street from the Sacred Heart Church which was built between 1903 and 1904. Between both beautiful and unique structures, it makes it very easy to spot and find in Galveston. Walking through this massive 19,000 square foot home, you can see the 50 rooms that are spread across four floors. The home at the time was estimated to cost about $250,000 to build, which today with inflation, which would be about $7.6 million to build. The mansion today is said to be valued at over $5.5 million. The craftsmanship of this home has to be one of the most delicate and well-crafted buildings that I've ever seen from the many places I have been to. You can tell that a lot of time and passion went into the design and construction of this beautiful home. Such as the exterior of this castle-like home is carved in limestone which is accented with red sandstone and red granite and gray granite laid over and around a steel frame. The carvings on the front of the building feature people, animals, plants, and mythical creatures. Even the inside of the home has a very unique and well-crafted sculptures built into the home and ceiling. There are fireplaces in almost every room. The house is a true art of work. Even has a hand-painted ceiling above the dining room. Not to mention, almost all the windows in the home are original with walk-on balconies and so much more. If I could suggest any mansion to tour or explore, this would be the one. From 2007 to this day, the mansion has been used as a museum by Galveston Historical Foundation. You can take a self-guided tour of this mansion for a very reasonable price. Okay guys, that will do it for today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell so you never miss a video. See you on the next one. Peace, I love you, and as always, God bless.